so let's discuss about the work related benefits for this is the last uh, info series in the benefits and allowances series so here we discuss about two types of work benefits I will give you only partial view based on my experience because I am doing a PhD here in Europe most places in Europe or in Netherlands doing a PhD is considered as a job so I have a work contract and non PhD is mostly I won't be discussing this but still while discussing about the benefits you get during a PhD or maybe I will also highlight some common points between both PhD and uh, non PhD like what are the common points for both that can maybe I don't know like help you to gain some insights so let's focus on the PhD I mean what you get as a work benefit common things so first is when you join working in Netherlands if you are coming from approximately 100 or 150 kilometers away from your from the location you are joining if you are coming away from this much distance then they generally pay you some compensation like in my case it was like 50% of the trip that cost you from that location to that location so in my case I transferred from Delft to uh, the south of Netherlands Valkenburg so it cost me like 200 euros to move all my things and uh, uh, luggage and everything bike so they paid me 100 euros that is like 50% of this so that is one benefit and another so whatever I'm speaking now actually is a common benefit for both PhD and non PhD it's not only you get it as a PhD whenever you go in a business trip or for a conference so then also you get your full uh, flights and uh, food and everything allowances everything once you come back and show them the receipts it is common everywhere so you get full refund of your trip and all the expenses that you made there related to the trip like food and traveling and everything and next is the main thing because when you get the salary in Netherlands the salary is uh, paid like in every month you get a salary and automatically the tax is deducted from your salary so when you receive the salary uh, what happens is that uh, you pay the tax but you also get some bonus uh, at the end of the year you get a bonus so in that uh, you have two types of bonus one is your uh, holiday bonus I mean the holiday allowance and the second one is your 13th month allowance so actually what you can do to get the benefit is that I don't remember exactly but this is also a common thing for both PhD and non PhD it applies for both so what you can do is out of so each of these allowances pay you around after tax it will be around 8% uh, of your annual salary you will get like holiday or 13th month allowance so what you can do is that if you you can go to your salary section or management whoever handles this issue or the topic and one of this allowance either the 13th month of the holiday I don't remember exactly you can schedule it to pay you every month instead of paying at the end both the bonus you can get one bonus at the end and one bonus every month so what happens if you do it every month is I don't want to again go into the details of the complicated calculations to waste both of your and my time 
but what happens is because you get every month one of the bonus at the end you gain around in my case depending on my salary it is around 100 to 200 euro i get extra at the end if i had got the same thing at the end of the year i would not have got this much money extra so this is my advantage 100 to 200 euro at the end of the year because i get one of the bonus each month and another benefit you can get is if you buy a bike or you uh, buy anything uh, i mean i think it is mostly bike not uh, then you will get another benefit i think if you don't if you don't get the 30 percent expense tax exemption then only you can claim this so if you buy a bike then one of this end bonus you can like because what happens your end bonus is approximately eight to nine percent of your annual salary and they deduct 50 percent tax so the bonus is more taxable as compared to your normal monthly salary so what happens is that after it is taxed it becomes relatively less so if you buy a bike or certain items they have in the in the list mostly it's people claim it in bikes then you can ask for this compensation like one of your end year bonus they will subtract like your bonus amount without tax bonus without tax minus the bike price and there is a limit i think like you have to show the receipt and there is some limit of thousand or i don't remember exactly i think there's no limit but it should be within 1500 or something like that. so more you pay for the bike uh, the better is the chance of saving so what happens is this amount is non-taxable the amount you pay for the bike becomes non-taxable so suppose take my example uh, the bonus is 2200 euros without tax my bike price is suppose 400 euros then the taxable amount now for me will be the rest of the amount that is resulting after subtracting this two so it will be like uh, 1800 euros so now this will be taxed so if you tax it 50 percent so i pay 900 euros as tax now if i buy the bike in the first year and if i had not bought this then i would have paid tax of 1100 euro so what happens as you can see here is that you save from this too you can see uh, like you save 200 euros so this is how you save if you buy something from your end bonus that becomes non-taxable and you save okay yeah one more thing so when you join as a new employee you get something for home furnishing and also for your rent if you have a previous rent overlap uh, in some place then you also get like 50 percent of the amount of rent you pay extra because you have to move cities so you have to pay one month rent extra so you get 50 percent and you also get furnishing cost for arriving and furnishing your new home at the new place so the furnishing cost is also approximately 8.1 percent of annual salary so it will be also somewhere around greater than equal to 2000 euro considering the salary you get as a phd or non phd it will be a bit more salary so it will be greater than equal to 2000 sorry euros that you get for this you don't need to show any bill no bill you just get this because for furnishing so in this we can buy you if you take an unfurnished house which is really cheap you can buy all your washing machine and uh, vacuum cleaner and uh, furnitures and anything you want 
so but not the least uh, one more allowance that you have in the during walk is i think it's called internet allowance and i'm not sure if it is same for all the companies or it varies for us it is like we get 10 euros every month on top of the salary that we get uh, once we show them the receipt that we have a contract and we pay some, some amount every year every month for the internet so if you show that then you get this and also you get something for the commute so Delhi so these are all additional allowances on top of your salaries because salary varies and I'm not going to into the salaries so for commute uh, for internet, for commute, you get approximately, it is also calculated based on the kilometers. So in my case, it's like 8 kilometers from the university. So I get approximately, I don't remember the exact calculation method, but the more the kilometers away you stay, the more you get the allowance. But still, it is not that much if you like stay like 50 kilometers and travel every day by train or by car. I don't think it will compensate the whole, but it will partially compensate. In my case, it is an advantage because I travel by bike, so I don't spend much. I only spend once in the bike and I also got that allowance benefit of buying the bike. And for commute, bike here I mean bicycle if people are in India or any place because everywhere they don't call bike for bicycle. For commute, uh, approximately I get 40 euros every month on top of my salary and uh, this in my case it's approximately 7.5 kilometer from the workplace that is my university i stay 7.5 kilometer away so this is like my bonus thing because i travel by bike every day if i go by bus then also it is sufficient so it depends for some it will be sufficient for some not not sufficient so i guess i covered all the different nuances and different types of allowances but still if i miss something just put the comments and suggestions below and uh, this brings an end to the information series for benefits and allowances also check my Quora blog so this is one FAQ and there will be more clusters which I have clustered in that blog and if you leave comments then they, it will be added up and slowly within one or two months for this generation and also for the coming generation from to Netherlands uh, this will serve as an information bank which can be like accessed from the years to come. So till next information series, bye.